Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number eight. Let's see what we have for today. Very simple, straightforward question. The question is what is the parameter of triangle PQR if the circle has radius of 10 and the circle is given to you circle looks something like this there is your circle Oh, don't look at me. That's how it came out. There's your center. We're given a right angle triangle. How do we know it's a right angle triangle? Because we have, we have told that right here, the symbol. There's your triangle PQR. We are told that this is 16. And we are told that the radius has radius of 10. If the radius is 10, from here to here is 10, and from center to this edge is 10, and that's all we are told. And the question simply is, what's the parameter of this triangle? Very simple, very straightforward question. Then the, then the question is, why am I doing it here? If it's, well, as I said, as I've said before, you have to wait and, and watch the whole thing and then decide if it was a good use of your time or not. There are two ways of doing this problem. I'm going to do First, the conventional way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the proper way, the academic way, the way most people will attempt this problem. And then I'm going to show you the different way. The traditional way is to use what is known as Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem simply says that the square of the hypotenuse, in this case this is the right angle, so the side that faces the right angle is this side, it says the square of the hypotenuse, square of the I don't know how to spell hypotenuse, so pretend it's the right spelling, square of the hypotenuse equals sum of the squares of the other two sides in a right angle triangle in a right angle triangle this is what the Pythagorean theorem said well that, that statement should have been actually down here the Pythagorean theorem states that in a right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse this, our hypotenuse is this one right here PR because it faces the right angle the square of the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 20, so square of the hypotenuse equals the square of the other two sides. This side, P to Q, is 16, so that's 16 squared, plus QR, which we do not know. Let's put an X there. That's it. That is how Pythagorean theorem is stated. If somebody asks you, what is the Pythagorean theorem, for God's sake, don't go around saying A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It has no meaning. Pythagorean uh, uh, did not wake up uh, one morning and uh, just climb the top of the hill in his village and scream to everybody, hey guys, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's not what he did. This is what he said. In a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Sum of the squares, not square of the sums. Squ not square of the sum. Square of the sum would mean this. You take the sum and you square it. This is the square of the sum. That's not what he said. He said sum of the squares. Sum of the squares. You square this side, you square that side, and you take their sum. Not square of the sum. Sum of the squares. It's very important. So this is what most people will do. They, use, they will use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for x. So let's do it then. So x squared would be 20 squared, which is 400, minus 16 squared, which is 256. And that comes out to be 
let's see, 144, and therefore x is 12. This is how most people will do it. There is nothing wrong with it, which is fine. I'm going to show you a different way of solving it. Because of course I did it very quickly, but some people will take some time to figure out this 200 square and 16 square and so forth. You have to know these things. Let's do it different way. I need the room, so I'm going to raise everything that, I, that, that we do not need. I'm going to raise everything actually, except the picture there. And we're going to redo the problem in a different way. Just stay with me. Okay, here we go. What we have to realize and understand is something that is called a, a 3, 4, 5 triangle. What is a 3, 4, 5 triangle? A 3, 4, 5 triangle is a fluke of nature. It's a freak. A 3, 4, 5 triangle is a freak of nature because It is the only, I don't even know how to spell only, because it is the only right angle triangle where the three sides happen to be, I need the room, I need to raise it, anyway I hope you got everything here square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. This is this is Pythagorean theorem. This is the proper articulation, proper statement of Pythagorean theorem. Do not go around saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It has no meaning. For one thing, in that statement you never even mentioned the fact that it only applies to a right angle triangle. There was no mention of it. It's simply going around saying a squared plus b squared equals c squares, as I already told you five times, it has no meaning. This is Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to continue here. 3, 4, 5 triangle. What is a 3, 4, 5 triangle? Well, it's a freak of nature. It's a freak of nature and I'll tell you why in a second. Because it's the only right angle triangle where the three sides happen to be 3 consecutive integers. Three consecutive integers. Integers, of course, is a fancy way of saying a whole number. In other words, in other words, there is no such thing as there is no such thing as a four, five, six triangle. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And if you don't trust me, do it out yourself. Do the experiment. Pick up a ruler. Pick up a ruler and make a straight line exactly 4 inches long. Then take the ruler, make it straight vertically, make sure you make it straight so it's 90 degrees and draw a 5 inch line, exactly 5 inch or 5 centimeter, 5 centimeter, 4 centimeter and measure the distance from here to here and you will see that it is not 6 centimeter, it's something other than 6 centimeter. This side that you see here is going to be 16 plus 25, 41, it's going to be square root of 41, it is going to be something more than 6 inches. There is no such thing as 11, 12, 13. There is no such thing as 7, 8, 9. There is only one right angle triangle. The nature created only one right angle triangle where the three sides happen to be three consecutive integers. Now, after having said all that, here comes the butt part. Because of course, there was a, there was a punch uh, punchline somewhere, obviously. There, there has to be a payoff because you already knew all this stuff. But if the 3, 4, 5 triangle does appear in the exam, in the exam, it doesn't matter which exam, whether you're taking SAT or GRE or GMAT, it doesn't matter which exam, when the, when the 3, 4, 5 does appear in the exam, 9 out of 10 times it is going to be incognito. Let's learn that word. Where should we put it? Incognito. I'm going to stop for a second so that we can we can learn it properly incognito means in disguise day number 42 if you want to learn incognito properly and some other words related to word incognito and cognition just type in keshwani prep dash vocab t 
Just type in Kashwani prep dash vocab dash day 42. Type in that tag Kashwani prep dash vocab dash day 42 and this will pop right up. So if the, if the 345 triangle does appear in the exam, it is going to appear incognito, in disguise. In other words, they're not going to simply tell, they're not simply going to give you uh, some, something like this, where a 5 and a 4 and simply ask you how much is that. Of course, it's too simple. It's not going to be like that. So how does a 345 triangle appear incognito? For that, I need room. So again, I need to raise everything. I'm going to read one more time to you. What is a 345 triangle? If somebody asks you what it is, it's a fluke. It's a fluke. 345 triangle is a fluke. It's a freak of nature. He's a freak. Why is he a freak? Because no other right angle triangle has the characteristics where the three sides happen to be three consecutive integers. There is no other right angle triangle. It is the only one. He's a freak. He's, he's a one of a kind. He's a freak of nature because it's the only right angle triangle where the three sides happen to be three consecutive integers. I do not know if anybody ever explained to you in this manner as to what is a 345 triangle. That's what it is. But it up, he, but he, I was about to say never, but never is a very strong statement. But he hardly ever appears, shows up himself as a straightforward 345 triangle, stands there and says, here I am 345 triangle. He always likes to come in, a, in disguise, incognito. Let me show you a couple of examples. We'll do a few examples of the 345 triangle incognito. For example, can you tell me how much is that side? And if you're about to do if you're about to do 10 squared equals 8 squared plus x squared, stop yourself, stop yourself, there is no need for it. What you have to recognize is that this is 8, which is 2 times 4, this is 2 times 5, we have a 5 and the hypotenuse, which is what we need. We need 5 and the hypotenuse, we have the 5 and the hypotenuse, we have a 4 here, this must be 3 times 2. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle incognito. Basically what we have done is, we have taken this, we have taken this guy, a, three, four, five, a regular 345 triangle, we, on a piece of paper, you have drawn a 3 inches, 4 inches and 5 inches, a triangle with 3 inches, 4 inches and 5 inches of hypotenuse. And if you don't trust it, do it yourself. If you draw exactly 3 inches this way, and draw exactly 4 inches this way, and with the ruler measure it, and you will see that this distance is exactly 5 inches. 3, 4, 5, as long as this is the right angle triangle. So we have drawn this on a piece of paper, and then we flip it on the Xerox machine, on the copier, and we have expanded it, we have enlarged it by 100%. If you enlarge something by 100%, it's twice the original size. That's what this guy is. It's the same guy, this guy being magnified, being enlarged by 100%. But he's still a 3-4-5 triangle, even though he does not look like it. It's a 3-4-5 triangle. Let's do a couple of more examples of 3-4-5 triangle incognito. about uh, 15, 25, and how much is this guy? Again, very simple, very straightforward, as long as you can find something. I see here 15, which immediately I want to break down into 3 times 5. This is 5 times 5. I see a 5, I see a 3, and they are both multiples of 5 here, which means this guy must be 4 times 5. Voila, that's it. Only takes a second to find it out. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle incognito being magnified five times. The previous one was only twice as large. Let's do one more. Fifty times root seven, forty times root seven. How much is this guy? Well, that's very straightforward. This is simply this is simply 5 times 10 times root 7. This is 4 times 10 times root 7. So this guy has to be 3 times 10 times root 7. Voila! Voila! There you go, you see? This is our common multiple right now. Whatever that quantity happens to be. So the missing side here is simply 30 times root 7. 
Imagine trying to do this uh, by hand or even with a calculator. It will take you forever. Let's do one more example. And then we'll call it a day. Let's do one more example. Well, is this a 3-4-5 triangle? Yes, it is. It's a 3-4-5 triangle incognito. So this guy is basically 3 times half. Half of 3 is 1 and a half. This guy is simply 4 times half. If this is 3 times half and this is 4 times half, this would have to be 5 times half. That's your missing side. 4, 5 and a half. And if you were quick enough to realize it, you can use that knowledge here. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to flip it. Or if you like, you can leave it alone the way it is. If it makes it easier for you to see it. There is your P to R, which is 20. And P to R is our hypotenuse because it's facing the right angle. This is 16. How much is this guy? Well, let's see. Well, this is our hypotenuse. How do I know it's hypotenuse? For two reasons. First of all, it's facing the right angle. So it's hypotenuse. Secondly, it's the largest side. I can see from the picture. Not that it should depend on the picture, but this is 16, this is 20, this is something less than that. This is 5 times 4. This looks like a 4 times 4. Well, if this is 5 times 4 and this is 4 times 4, the multiple seems like a 4. This must be 3 times 4. Voila, that's it. The missing side is 12. The mis missing side, side is 12, which is what we found earlier with the Pythagorean theorem. And the question originally was asking you how much is the perimeter, which is very straightforward now. You simply add up all the sides. 20, 36, 46, 48. Your answer is 48. The perimeter of this triangle is 48. Voila, that's it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something useful, some shortcuts for the exam. If you wish, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for SAT, GRE, GMAT and TOEFL. You can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email from there. Or you can simply go to kishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there as well. You can get hold of me. Alright, and I'll do whatever it is that I can do to be of any assistance to you. Thank you.